Happy 2018, everybody. Lots to talk about, lots to show. But let's start off. I almost died last Saturday. Okay. Tad exaggeration. Um, but I will insert a very unflattering photo of myself to show you guys of what I was dealing with. So enlarged glands in my neck for a few days. Saturday woke up and they were the most swollen they had ever been for the last 24, 36 hours ish. And felt like someone was sitting on my chest. It was impacting my airway. So went to the ER and a few hours later, they couldn't figure out what the cause was. Maybe some local head, neck area infection. They did a CT scan with contrast. Nothing. Just showed enlarged lymph nodes and that's it. Um, I was thinking maybe I was going to get tooth pain or some sort of infection. Nope. So, gotta love the human body that here you show these symptoms, just enlarged lymph nodes, nothing else. No hives, no rash, fever chills, sore throat, nothing. So, I'm on the mend. Um, I think Joe's a little upset that couldn't upgrade um, or get rid of my stitching shit. Better luck next time. All right. But I hope all of you guys have been well. If you have not noticed, I made a announcement on my Instagram stitching in sequence. Um, I changed the title of my channel. I think they just need to go together, be the same name, hand in hand. Um, so new year, new channel name. I think it fits perfectly. Obviously I'm not living up to it today. Um, but the shirt was calling me. I call it my S&M top and I love it. All right, uh, California, I was there during New Year's. I went a few days before. I was there for almost about six days, had a great time, saw all kinds of friends, did thrifting, and you know you have a problem with thrifting when you're trying to kill some time before you, you have to be to the airport and you go thrifting and you buy stuff forgetting you have to take it home on a plane when you only have a carry-on and you basically repack everything in your suitcase in the back of your, your rental car. Yeah, that was me. I found shirts and knickknacks and this thing I could not leave behind for three dollars I mean really it's I mean it's just perfect G55 I saw this and said I have to take this home. I have to figure out how to get this in my suitcase. N31. Especially for $4. I love it. N35. I don't know if it has all the balls. I really don't care. 
It's more of just the piece to sit, I-28. Um, good home decor piece, for sure. O sixty six. 66 No? Nothing? Alright, we'll try next time. Um, I wish this was the way I could pick winners for my giveaways. Let's do a bingo ball. Um, so yeah, I carried this on. The TSA people asked what it was. No other questions. All right, what else? Next on the list. I'm gonna add photos um, and a video of California trip here. Some other things that I got while I was there. I was in downtown Long Beach for a few days and they have stores, thrift stores, secondhand stores for a few blocks. It's called Retro Road.
The things are overpriced a little bit, depends on what you're searching for. The sequins were outrageous when I can find them here at my stores for basically nothing. And I found, so my Krynik jacket, um, I found that at a thrift store and they wanted $65 for it. I got mine for, I think like 17. I picked up one piece. Um, this is what I picked. It's kind of a crop top, but not really. Super cute, vintage pink, um, Greenies Burbank, California. So I thought it was super cute. I needed to get something in sequins to walk away with. Um, and I think that is it. So, when I was gone, I usually just tell the boys, if I get any mail, just come back here and throw it on my desk. Mm. I will also include pictures. I went to Museum of Death. death town i did not know that this place existed did not realize that when i posted photos on instagram people said that it was on their bucket list of places to go i just happened to be on google maps and i saw museum of death and i thought oh my god i have to go you have to go it's this amazing place. I could not take any photos or videos inside, but if you Google, you can kind of sort of see what the museum is all about. But I will add in some photos of the outside. No, from there. So I did get the cup. Of course I did. I got a tote bag, which I need to iron desperately. And I was looking at needle minders. Well, seeing what they had, they had pins. So um, they had pins and I thought, okay, I'll just take the back off and make it a needle minder easy enough. And then out by, the, by their checkout, they had a magnetic wall with magnets and pins. And they had a little bit of a larger version already as a magnet. So, yes, absolutely. I also picked up some great postcards. So these will definitely be sent out to some of my dark friends that I know that would appreciate them. Their ticket entrance um, are pretty cool and they put the hole punch through the eye. When I was also in uh, downtown, I did an Instagram live and kind of took you guys with me through the shops. You could kind of just see the area. Um, this one store I went in, it was medical, dark, Frida, Michelle, they had the taco purse, um, all kinds of fox stuff for Miss Danielle. And I got this magnet, which is perfect for a needle minder. All right, just making a pile. So when I got back from my trip, I had a package in the back. And one, I was confused as I was looking. 
thinking, where in good God did this come from? That's a lot of stamps. Um, and then I see it's from Yanni. So, I, you get certain stitchy gifts. And you know that every single thing that they put in that package is thought out for you specifically. And this is what this gift was. Um, I have not, I know Michelle tried these caramel candies. I have not yet, and the boys will probably be all over those. Um, this postcard, I absolutely died. So it's a monument water feature that I believe is near her hometown. Um, and it's these three women in a circle. They're holding up, I'm not exactly sure what, um, but the girls are topless and I know she had shown this in one of her videos and I had told her, fun fact, those ladies were modeled after me. So it's only appropriate she sends me such a postcard. I do not have Frida earrings. I have my whole little shrine up here, but I don't have Frida earrings. This killed me, killed me. Um, the floss is perfect. This is DMC variegated 4200. And then I like to think this is some of Yanni original thread right here. But can you guys read? No, that's not going to show it. I need something. Let's use. Abby, I'm using your card. I got your card, honey. It says stitching in sequins. Really? I love this. Um, Joe asked if it was like a paddle and I said, careful, I might use it on you. Um, but I love this as a thread sorter. It's got holes in it. There we go. Um, the threads are perfect. I love this. Um, so, wonderful. And this, just like Michelle's piece of fabric, screams Halloween. See, Michelle, I told you my fabric was just a little bit better. Yellows and some light browns, taupes. It's just all kinds of goodness. She does modeling on fabric like nobody's business. Um, I want to be able to dye thread like Yanni. So thank you, my love. I appreciate all the gifts. Um, thank you so much. All right, I wanted to get a finish done for 2018, even though I really want to work on my BAPs. <coughs> I looked at 
what was the closest to being finished? And we all have those projects. We all have those whips where you've put them aside and people have been doing their whip kind of parade going through them and wondering, why did I stop on these? They just need a few more stitches. Why did I stop? Basically, that's how it was with good intentions. So good intentions, Kathy Barrick, um, I've enabled a lot of you guys to buy it, start it, get it out of your stash, or finish it up. Um, Abby Top Knot Stitcher, her sister gave her the most amazing jewel tone threads to do this. Abby, get on it, girlfriend. I literally just finished this. Um, a few minutes before I started the video, I found the frame at Joann's, $17, it was 40% off. I love the detail around the edge. First I thought it was a little big, the shadow box. Um, but then I realized I'm going to put stuff into it. So this is a 12 by 12. It might need to be a TFD. Wasn't really thinking that it was gonna go that way. I know it's my first frame job of 2018, but it's my favorite for 2018 thus far. All right, so let me see. So there, I love the wood detail. Love it. Um, kind of primitive. I think it matches the pattern very well. I love the dark wood. So the background fabric shadow box basically is complete match to what I stitched this fabric on, which is 32 counts lamb's wool two over two. I pulled the threads, you can see there, I pulled the threads so you can see some sort of fringe on the end. It came with three of these kind of mother of pearl pins but I luckily had an extra one um, in my stash so I just laid it down and pinned them in, put it at an angle um, and then down at the bottom. So all those spools that I had gotten at the thrift store line up perfectly. I was going to lightly glue them down, but they fit perfectly. Um... So none of this stuff is tacked down. I can totally take it out. This tape measure was in a sewing box of things that I took from my uh, grandpa's sister's house when she was downsizing into an assisted living. I jumped on all of her sewing stuff. So this is a measuring tape of hers as well as a thimble. And then over in this corner um, are a pack of, yes, four scent needles um, with some still in them, which was also in her little container of things that I had found. So um, I just need to prop that up a little better. I love how this turned out. Absolutely love it. Um, so I'm gonna see, I don't know. Will it fit here? Boom. Right there. That is where I'm gonna hang it um, so I can always see it. So right there under dragons. But this is First FFO for 2018. 
and I'm in love with it. All right, so I don't want that to fall. Now, I've been seeing people with their bullet journals, keeping track. I'm not one to do that. Am I one to keep track of finishes for the year? Yes. Do I write down when I start a project and end it? Yes, more for just interest at the end, like how long did it take me? So when I do start a project on my copy, I just write up at the top um, when the start date was. So, but other than that, that's all I keep track of, but I do keep track of finishes for the year. 2016, I had 14 finishes. In 2017, I had 28. This year, I'm not really giving myself a number. It's basically such as many damn projects I can. Um, so I have ones in mind that I want to get finished for the fair. So those are the ones that I'm working on and striving towards finishing. I did buy a calendar though. Um, I think it's Walmart for like four bucks, nothing fancy. I wrote down in the notes, just keeping track of finishes year by year. And then I wrote down on the 8th that I had finished Good Intentions. I also have added in, because this girl goes to all the retreats, spends all the husband's money, goes to all the retreats. So in May, I have written down for the floss tube retreat in Jersey. I also need to add in StitchCon. Are you going to StitchCon? Because I'm going to StitchCon. Of course I'm going to StitchCon. I'm going to be there. And October as well in Minnesota. Michelle, it better not be cold as fuck. So I got to keep my retreats written down so I know where I'm going. So that's the extent of how I keep track of things. I want to stitch. I don't want to be spending my time writing it in a notebook, keeping track of all the little details. All right. What have I been working on? I have been obsessed with, I will even take it off because I need to change it on the hoop anyway. I have been obsessed with Matters Choice by Carriage House Samplings. It was supposed to be a sell. Trisha, Abby, how's that going? I'm not really playing by the rules. I mean, I'm, I'm stitching along just at a different pace and amount of time. But they have started. This again is something I have enabled people to buy along with the fabric. Start, get out of their stash or finish. And I love that. Um, you guys do it to me as well if it's through watching videos or on Instagram. And I think this is just an amazing piece. I didn't bring the chart, but if you are familiar with it, down at the bottom there is a band um, about an inch and it has this design that looks, they're hearts. I'm not an artsy cutesy lover of that. Um, I just think it kind of just takes away almost in a sense, at least to me. So I have decided not to stitch that bottom section of the chart.
I am hoping for a finish this weekend. Joe is leaving this afternoon with Ariton. They're going to go snowboarding. Um, Ariton's taking classes tomorrow and Cal really didn't show any sort of interest. And Joe wanted to do something just with Ariton. So Cal and I will have the weekend to ourselves. And so I'm looking to get this done. This amazing fabric is Havana, 40 count, one over two. The thread is DMC 3750. It's amazing. Um, you look at the chart and you would think that it is stitched in black. No, this is the called for color for the piece. 3750 is the called for color. Um, I love, pull it out of your box. It has almost like a sheen to it and I love it. Um, I think it's absolutely perfect on this fabric. So I finished the alphabet last night. So basically these hearts here are what is down below the alphabet, which I'm voiding out. It's basically mirrored, so I have the rest of the flower with, or the pot with the bird, and then squirrel, deer thing, bird, bee. And that's it. That's all I got left. Uh, that house, I'm happy to say, the frog did not visit me. I am not, oh, and then I have the fence to finish up. I am not one to get the frog. Now, then you say, oh, so you're just strictly stitching. No, I don't know. I guess I, I always have the chart underneath my needle minder. I'm watching where I'm stitching. Um, and I can, I don't know, chalk that up to my good multitasking skills, but I've never been one to have the frog follow me. Um, I've done a little frogging on it, but maybe it was like seven stitches. I put a flower or like a little leaf in the wrong area. But I think when you can stitch on a piece that has so much detail without the frog visiting you, you just love it even more. And I know that's a lot of reasons why people stop working on pieces is because they get the frog. But definitely don't let it discourage you. I am in love with this um, and I will be framing this up as well. But it's amazing and... Havana and 3750 is my new favorite. I got this piece of Havana at Stitcher's Paradise in Vegas when I was there the last time. Um, so it's more than enough. And then I'm happy that I'll have a big rest of a piece to continue whatever else on. Start whatever else on. All right. Next, Lisa, the silver stitcher, Michelle, we're calling you out. Bendy Stitchy, we're calling you out. Um, which I know, Michelle, you saw that I had this pattern too, and you had messaged me a long time ago saying, hey, we should do a sal on it. So, Michelle, Lisa and I are calling you out. Oh, Marlene bag. Do you guys have a Marlene bag? Oh, it's goodness. 
goodness, that's what this is. So, whenever Lisa gets her fabric, Michelle, get your shit together. We're going to start Jardin Privé, Mademoiselle Rose. I know it's cu it's cutesy, but it's not. It's Quaker, which I love. It's pink, which <sighs> it says the girl that just bought a damn sequin pink top. I don't know. There's something about it that I love. I'm going to go with it. So I love her dress. I love her shoes. She's got some long ass legs arms and hair which reminds me of myself so we'll probably we will start a sale on this if you want to join join us order it i pulled the threads for it lovely pinks and greens it's just gorge using my mama joan bag that was gifted during the minnesota retreat wanted to i don't fuss over fabric i know a lot of people will fuss with fabric figure try to figure out what to stitch on they take a long time just stitch the piece, just pick your fabric, and go. I had not put this piece of fabric away from when I got it at Citrus Paradise. I pulled the stack down to organize the find fabric for Mademoiselle. I saw this, done. Threw it in the bag. This is steel gray linen 28 count that I'm going to do Mademoiselle on. Um, the threads look fantastic. They totally pop. Very, they, it's amazing how thread colors change when you line them all up on a fabric they almost take a different look um no granted they can look muted more washed out um these i think just look super super rich on this steel blue amazing so that will be my new start when Lisa and Michelle say go. Kit it up, ready to go. Girls, let me know when. And anyone that wants to join in, please feel free to do so. All right. Um, I was asked by uh, I forget Lisa was it you you asked how I store my charts I just picked this up a couple of days ago at the thrift store dollars this is how I organize my charts um, I have charts that I have finished for one which is getting full um, I have kitted up and then I have just charts so this is how I have my kitted up charts ready to go kitted up doesn't necessarily mean fabric and thread um, to me, it could just be one or the other. And if I look through this, this is going to make me want to start all the things, but I can't. Um, 
Book of Spells, Fabric Threads at Stitcher's Paradise, my other Long Dog Sampler. I don't have fabric for it, thank God, because I probably would have started by now, because Cassandra is mean like that. Minerva, um, fabric, chart, another Kathy Barrick. So yeah, this is how I store my charts. So they're all up. They take up less space than laying down. You can find these at the thrift store. I know the dollar store had some of these pen and paper ones, not as thick. Um, cardboard, to say, you know, um, but at least mine, they had those. But every once in a while, you can find these really good metal ones at the thrift store. So keep an eye out for those. And if you get a lot of them, you could actually even organize them even more specifically. Theme, Christmas, Halloween, or go by designer. I'm not there yet. Went to my thrift store places this week. Well, let me show you what I got. Now, this was Goodwill, $3. Stretcher bars. I don't have any stretcher bars. Um, I don't know if these are just like the generic ones that you can buy at like Joann's. I don't think they're like any specific brand ones. I don't see any markings on them. Um, this piece was already attached to it. Not my style. Ayrton loves it though and said, can you hang this up in my room? And I said, you like it? He said, yes. And I said, fine. So the two swans and the rainbow will be going up in Ayrton's room. And I am looking forward to messing with these and seeing if I can figure them out. It'd be nice for my larger, um, if this would work good for Hawk Run Hollow or my Virtues piece. I think Virtues is too, might be too wide. I'm not exactly sure. But three bucks, I thought, shit. Do it. Um... These two next things do not fall into the cross stitch category, but bead belt category. Um, I couldn't walk away. It was three dollars. Velcro. And this dress, somebody's bootay. It's just a little too big. I think they went for an extra helping at the buffet. Um, but it's a Cameron Mark Valvo collection dress. Probably a couple hundred dollar dress uh, that I scored for 10 bucks. Fully beaded. Um, it's like almost coppery gold. It's gorgeous. Um, I, so I need to fix just the zipper down here. Um, I'm working on losing a little weight. I have. Um, hang this sucker up in your wardrobe and this will motivate you. That's what you need to do. You go thrifting. You find a couple hundred dollar dress for ten bucks. You hang it up. That's good motivation. So, um, I also hit up my hospice thrift store this week. I did not find an LDS book. I did not find any sequins.
cross-stitched handmade linens me that's me these pieces almost have a I don't even know if bar bargello is the term but it reminds me of that sort of stitching I may be right or you could be like McKenna you're drunk you don't know what the hell you're talking about with variegated thread as well satin stitch ish I guess it would be looks like yeah it's like satin stitch um, and then but yeah so there was this one and then a little bit of a smaller one This one, I loved the colors on it. This was $2. Oh. Just amazing. Amazing. This could almost be like a small table runner or just laying out in your table. Um, so you can see it's a pretty decent size. Great border along the edge. And it has this theme that basically repeats. Um, Asian in nature. Dog. This is kind of like willow tree bird building, um, but that goes all the way around the piece. And then found this, which is similar, but I don't know if it's a match because it's floral and not Asian, but ugh, it's amazing. The edge is the same though, so it could be a match. But I just, I just wonder, like, who stitched these? Are they alive? Why didn't their family hold on to them? I am just honored that I get to have them. And I walked in, I was checking out and the lady had seen what I had grabbed and she's like, oh, here are more handmade pieces. And I said, well, I cross stitch and I like to save cross stitch linen, cross stitch pieces that you guys have in here, basically anything sort of handmade in a sense. So she had gone to the back and found this one and then those first two pieces. Um... Here's this piece. Which has stains on it. Um, but I bet could come out. It's great detail on the edge. And the stitching. And the back is obviously second to none. So. Again, I have no idea what I will do with these. I have put some of these, I do have some pieces um, in my Amazon store, Sincere Stitches. If any of these that I am showing, except for the next ones, any of you guys are interested in, let me know. We can do a trade for a chart. Um or I'll just charge you for what I played plus shipping because I want these definitely to be used and displayed. Um, so I think that's super cool. Now these, I have to figure out what to do with these. They're, they're 
pieces of art on their own that almost should be framed. They have their just green edged border, just perfect. Here is one of the motifs, runs along the bottom. Just amazing. So placemat, I'm thinking, possibly. Paper. Okay. Now I still I still need to look to look these up. So up at the top it says stock. So they obviously this was some sort of belonged in a store and this was their stock piece to show made in china yenqing craftwork peking shows size the material the pattern and then local it says us 35 local currency 520. the tag is still attached So I'm interested to look up and see what I can find on, if I just Google it, is it a company? Then I came across another one as well, which had a little bit of a little different. And had a napkin attached to this one. Again, material, pattern, what it would cost, the date. Can you guys read that date right here? It's super, super light and I don't know if the camera will be able to pick that up. February 1940. That was 25 years before I was even born. Nineteen forty. Amazing. Major score. Um, Joe wants me to do research on them and then figure out what they're worth and if they're worth anything, put them up on eBay. He always wants me to sell my thrift store stuff. He's like, you know clothing, you know designers, you find things. I found a St. John, anyone that knows clothing. St. John, I found a sweater. Um, open cardigan. It's probably like a $250 sweater. Mint condition. Joe's like, put it up on eBay. I'm like, if we, if I desperately need to sell something, then yes, but no. So... Those linens, I think, were absolute fantastic scores at the thrift store this week. That is it. Almost an hour once I add photos and stuff in. I will continue working on Matters Choice. And... I want to pick this up again. Virtues. I guess I'm in a bright color, change your thread sort of mood. That's what I'm in after being with 3750. So next video, you shall see Matters Choice done and maybe some good progress on 
hurt you. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, subscribing, liking. The comments give me life. I love the comments. You guys kill me with the comments, your one-liners. Um, I love you guys. I hope you all have a fantastic 2018 with lots of stitching, lots of finishes. You know I'm all about the finishes. Finish your stuff, people. Make me proud. Have a fantastic rest of your Friday, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.